The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. At the turn of the 20th century in the city of Tzfas in Israel, there lived a, a rabbi known as the Ridvaz. His name was Rabbi Yaakov David Wolofsky. He was known by the nickname the Ridvaz. So one year, on his father's yard site, the anniversary of his father's passing, it happened to be a very cold, nasty day out. And the Ridvaz braves the cold, and he goes to the synagogue because he has to say Kaddish for his father. In the afternoon is Mincha prayer. So again, he goes back for Mincha, and they're waiting for the 10th to come. As he's standing by the lectern, the few that were in the synagogue notice that he's crying. Now, okay, it's his father's yurt site. It's the anniversary of his father's passing. He must be in an emotional state, so they just back off. But there was one fellow there that felt very close to the rabbi. And he felt, you know what, I can be open with him. And he goes over to the Ridvaz and he says, let me ask you a question. Why are you crying today? Now, I know it's your father's yurt site. I know that. But number one, your father lived a very long life. It wasn't as if he died tragically young. That's number one. But number two, he died 50 years ago. I've been with you for many years, and I've never seen this emotion on your father's yard site. And 50 years later, you're standing here and you're crying on the day of your father's passing. Why? So the Rudva says, I'll tell you why I'm crying. You see, earlier today when I came for the morning services and it was freezing outside, I was thinking to myself, maybe I should see for the afternoon service that I don't have to go out in the freezing cold to ask if there would be people that would come to my house so I can make a minion there and say Kaddish in my house so I don't have to walk again in the freezing weather. I didn't end up doing it, but I thought about doing it. And because of that, I'm crying. So, well, number one, what was wrong with that thought? It's not a bad thought. And number two, you didn't end up doing it anyway, so why are you crying again? So he says, I'm crying because I thought of a story of my father. And he tells him the story. I remember when I was a little boy, we grew up in Poland in a little town called Slutsk. There was no yeshiva in Slutsk. So what there was, it was a private tutor. You hired a tutor. So my father hired for me, his son, the best tutor in town. His name was Rapsender. Everyone wanted Rapsender to be the tutor of their children because he was the best. My father got him. I was one of his students. And he would charge one ruble a month to be your son's tutor. My father made his living by building furnaces for people in their homes. And one winter business was terrible because there was a shortage of cement and lime. So he couldn't build any furnace. There was no supplies. So he was technically unemployed. And he had no money. One month went by. A second month go by. A third month. Rep. Sender is not getting his one ruble a month. Three months go by. Rep. Sender wasn't paid. Rep. Sander was a sweet man, but he let it be known that he needs to put food on his table as well. And if you can't afford to pay me anymore, I understand. I'm not going to go after you for the three that you owe, but I'm going to have to find another student to take your son's place so I can at least earn that ruble a month from someone else. He says, my father was so heartbroken because to my father, me receiving the education that Rep. Sander can give me was everything to him. And losing that was, was, was so bad. That night, my father went to the synagogue to pray. And he hears there that there's a wealthy man who's talking, and he's complaining that his son and daughter-in-law, they just got married, and he built them a beautiful house for them to move into after their wedding. But because of the shortage of cement, there's no furnace in the house. And because there's no furnace and it's freezing outside, they can't move in and they're still living in my house. So if anyone could find someone that could build a furnace in their house, I'll pay them six rubles, which was a lot of money. My father came home that night from the synagogue. He had a discussion with my mother, he says. Whatever he asked my mother, she said, yes, absolutely. My father took a hammer and took apart the furnace brick by brick in our own home. He then took all of the material that he took apart from our own furnace. He went to this house. He built that furnace for this wealthy man so that their son and daughter-in-law could move in. He took the six rubles. He handed it to me. And he said, go to Rab Chaim Sender right now. Tell him three rubles are for what I owe him. And the other three are for the next three months. 
we froze that winter, but I continued having Reb Sender as my tutor. So when I thought earlier today that it was so cold outside, that maybe I should make the minion in my house, I can say Kaddish for my father in my house, I thought, what a chutzpah that that thought ever came into my mind. To say Kaddish for a man that froze that winter so that I can have my education, that's the way I was going to repay him. I was so upset that I even had this thought that it moved me to tears. These were our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents. They gave everything over for Torah, for mitzvot, for God. If they froze, they froze, but they had their priorities. They understood what this meant. Bechol me'odecha. You give everything over for God. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.